Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Socha and today I am um, quilting a baby quilt and I just wanted to show a couple of tips on machine quilting a uh, quilt and um, specifically a baby quilt if you're doing this. Um, so a couple of things to go over are uh, the foot that you use to quilt with and I've got a walking foot attached here. I'll bring the camera a little closer in just a minute. But I just want to go over a couple of the main things. Walking foot. And I've got a guide also put on my walking foot so that I really don't have to mark my quilt, uh, which saves some time. And uh, this particular quilt was made from um, five inch squares. So a real simple, um, quilt design just sewing the squares together in rows and I've used that um, for the quilting design as well uh, so there's minimal measuring and pretty easy to do so um, but I still need the guide on here because what I'm doing is I'm quilting um, down the seam um, where every quilt block starts that's easy to see and you don't need any marks for that but then I'm quilting another two and a half inches down the center of the quilt blocks, that's where I need the guide. So once I have that on there, um, every time I quilt down the center of the block, I follow that guide down the seam line, and there I have it. So uh, no marking the quilt. I did start the center of the quilt with um, a little bit of ruler quilting with concentric circles, but I won't do that in this video. I'm just going to talk about the machine quilting part of it um, and just a couple of tips. All right, so I am going to get the camera a little bit closer so you can see um, the walking foot and um, the stitch that I chose to do this. This is a quilt for a baby girl. And one of the stitches that I love to do is the serpentine stitch. And uh, most machines will have this stitch on them. If they have a zigzag stitch, then a lot of times they will have a serpentine. You may just have to look in your sewing machine manual. Uh, but I know that, I mean, the machines that I've had in the past, the brother has it, Baby Lock has a serpentine, Janome, I haven't used a Janome, but I know that Janome has a serpentine <laughs> stitch. Um, so uh, any, any machine that has some decorative stitches will have it. If your machine does not have the serpentine stitch is that little curvy stitch, um, almost looks like an S. Uh, that is, they might call it something different, but I call it a serpentine. Uh, but if your machine does not have it, you can use a zigzag stitch, which that's on all the machines except for straight stitch. So um, use your zigzag stitch in the same way. Um, that I'm going to show you with the serpentine stitch. Um, on my machine, it's a Bernina, and this number four stitch, where it's got like the real soft curves, that's the serpentine stitch. This number two is the zigzag. So you can do the same thing with this one as you can do with this one. It's just that the um, this one has really pretty curves that makes it look like a ribbon. Over here, it sort of shows. So I've turned up the stitch to four and a half inches wide for the stitch length. And up here, um, well, the stitch length and depth. So this is as wide as it goes, 5.5. And this goes even wider, but then you start losing your curve. So you can see that. And I've tested it. And um, you can even go smaller. I did try like the two and a half, which is really pretty too. But for this one, I put it at four and a half because uh, I'm not quilting it pretty densely. And it looks like kind of ribbons. Here you can see um, it sort of blends in. But you can see that this looks... There you go, like a ribbon. And that's what I want it to look like. So every two and a half inches vertically is the serpentine stitch. Here you can see it because it's contrasting with that green fabric background. So really pretty. 
Um, so that's the stitch. And then I'll show you, um, this is the walking foot. And Bernina has really a great walking foot. Um, but if you buy walking feet, buy the one that is actually manufactured for your machine. I have had other machines and um, walking feet and the generic walking feet are just, they're okay, but um, it's always better to go with the um, machine, the feet that go with the machine. Uh, you'll have a lot less problems. So this is what I'm talking about with the bar guide. And this can be adjusted you just move that screw in the back here and it goes back and forth and then there's another one that goes if I wanted it to come out on this side so but I just have it fixed on this side at two and a half inches from the needle and then that would be directly in the center of this block so pretty simple and um, it's a very pretty quilt, I think a machine quilting design and pattern that you can really kind of get done in a fairly quick amount of time and it also looks really cute as well. So another tip is on the front of the quilt, I have uh, the thread color that most closely matches most of the fabrics on the front, which is a fuchsia thread. It's that uh, orophil right there. and. On the back of the quilt, I've got this cuddle type of a minky fabric, and it's gray. So I decided to put the bobbin thread in a gray. So it really just um, sort of blends it in. You'll still be able to see um, the curve definition, but um, I thought just to match it. But you can do contrasting if you want. But really, with this. Um, high of a pile it, the pink really wouldn't have shown up very well so it's just better that if you have a fabric like this to just match it on the back side of the quilt and another thing I will mention as a tip is quilting gloves these are machingers they've got a real they're very lightweight so your hands are not going to really sweat too much in these. That's why I love these so much. They're almost like a, I don't know, like a, they're cotton, but they feel like a real silky knit. And then the fingertips are dipped in um, like this latexy thing, which grips your fabric really well so that you can move it around. And then the other thing is, and I've just recently upgraded to this, but I got, a so steady table and this is a large acrylic table I think it's um, it's not wait what size is it I think it's the large size but they have even bigger sizes but um, I just got the one that was kind of in the middle um, it's pretty big it's it's definitely um, I think it's like 18 inches this way and 24 inches this way and it's made to fit precisely around my specific machine model. And this company does this. It, it will do this for any model of machine. So um, this is really, I mean, it keeps your fabric, your quilt up. Um, it helps the it to eliminate drag. I mean, there will be drag and you still do have to roll up your quilt on the sides, but to have that much table surface, because if you do not have a machine that sits down into the, to the table, um, it's very hard because you have like your machine and if you don't have a table, this machine even had like a small table that attached, but it curved and it really wasn't that big and um, yeah, the quilting on it was just, you know, literally a drag because <laughs> it, this fabric, it's heavy. And when it's all bunched up in your lap, it will pull. And then that affects your stitches, um, while you quilt. So this table really, I love it. it. It was worth the investment and it was so easy to install. Um, so I really highly recommend the Sto So Steady table. It will make your machine quilting and even your um, 
free motion quilting life so much easier and actually quite a lot more fun. So um, those are my tips and I am just gonna end the video by showing the serpentine stitch. I'm gonna do a couple of rows. In fact, I only have a couple left. This is almost all totally quilted. So let me show that. All right, so on with the quilt gloves. And I've got it rolled up over here. As much of weight that you can take off of pulling down from where your needle's at, the better. And you'll notice that you can feel it. And then I just kind of roll up what's in my lap and try to keep it as level to the so steady table as possible. All right, so I've already kind of started the serpentine and I'm just gonna double check because I was messing around with the stitch. Okay, four and a half by five and a half. And away we go. So I'm using my guide over here. Um, actually, on this row, I'm using the seam. Um, when I do the middle, I'll show you, I'll use the guide. I keep my eye over here instead of over here. But right now I got, I'm keeping my eye on this seam. So the serpentine stitch is kind of straddling that seam, which I kind of like because then it's sort of like the seams just go away. All right, and, any, and, and you just constantly have to reposition your hands and make sure even the weight on this side of the machine can pull. So you just gotta get it to where it's not gonna pull. Both hands here, smooth it out, and away you go. You don't have to go super fast. See, there's tons of adjustments, but it ends up going faster than you think. And before you know it, especially on a baby quilt, those are like the best. <laughs> nice little sizes to quilt. And here we are almost to the end of the row. So on my machine, I just quilted a little bit past the actual quilt top into the batting. This serpentine stitch on my machine, when it's wider than a certain width, I can't back stitch. So I've just been quickly going to the straight stitch and putting the, uh, my machine has a knot, a tie off. So it just, the, the needle goes up and down and ties off the thread and I clip it. And that's it. So it secures the thread. And then I go back up to the next spot. Now this is where I'm gonna have to use this little guide right here to guide me down the center of the block. And again, I already have it on the straight stitch and I'm gonna knot off, tie off, knot off at the very beginning and then switch back to my four and a half wide by five and a half serpentine stitch. And here we go. It's actually kind of fun once you get into the groove and rhythm of quilting it. All right, so now at this point, it start, can start to feel a little bit of the drag. So I just readjust front and back and side pull it smooth. This is my guide over here and make sure that I'm following I'm following this to make sure this is going down here and that keeps my row of quilting straight. This fabric is Allison Glass from her Road Trip collection, and I absolutely love, <laughs> I love this fabric. It's just so pretty and so happy.
Okay, that's it. So I just finished the serpentine quilting. So cute. And I like that it's not so densely quilted, but it's quilted enough to keep the batting from bunching and that sort of thing. Um, but every two and a half inches vertical. And then, you know, if you wanted to, you could also do every two and a half inches horizontal uh, for a little bit of a ribbony grid pattern. But on this one, I don't want to do that so much just because, you know, I do have this heavier um, cuddle fabric on the back. And um, yeah, so I just wanted this to look like flowing ribbons going down the quilt. Now what I'm going to do now, I could have done this at the beginning, but um, it doesn't matter. But I am going to do sort of a, um, a little baste stitch around the edge all the way around before I trim it for binding. Thanks for watching my video on machine quilting the serpentine stitch and check back for more videos I'll post on uh, sewing quilting and decorating how to's and if you like the video hit a thumbs up and please subscribe uh, and I will see you next time.